Magneto. Sweeping down upon the underworld to smash gangland comes the mysterious, all-powerful character who is a problem to the police, but a crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone, but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask and a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk, but stronger than steel. Today's episode of The Blue Beetle is entitled The Frame-Up. Stanley Rogers, convicted of killing Bat Doylton, small-time loan shark and gambler, is in the death house at the state penitentiary awaiting death by electrocution. Rogers, scion of a prominent and respectable family, claims he shot in self-defense. But the jury thought otherwise. As our story opens, patrolman Dan Garrett who in secret is really the Blue Beetle, is entering the little apothecary shop of Dr. Franz, his confidant and friend. Hello, Doc. Where are you? I am back here. Is that you, Demi? Yes. What are you doing? I'm I'm working on some experiments in my laboratory. Uh, How are you this morning? Oh, I'm feeling great. I've been waiting for you to show up. Anything special? Uh, Here's something in the personal column of this morning's paper that might interest you. Hmm. To the Blue Beetle. I am desperate. My brother awaits death by electrocution for a crime he did not commit. Can you help me? Brenda Rogers. Well, that must be uh, Stanley Rogers who shot Beth Doylson, a small-time racketeer. Yes. uh, Rather a strange case, if I remember correctly. Rogers admitted he shot Doylson, but claimed it was in self-defense. He shot him with a pistol he found in Doylson's apartment, I believe. Yeah. Uh, Wasn't it brought out in the trial that Rogers owed Doylson a large sum of money? Yes, he borrowed from him on several occasions to cover his gambling losses. Where did Rogers meet Doylson? He was introduced to Rogers by a girl, chance acquaintance at a gambling club. It's too bad. Rogers comes of a good family. I can't understand his getting mixed up in such a thing. Well, he was a little wild at college. Too much money to spend. Often at an early age, wasn't he? Yeah. He was really raised by an older sister who spoiled him. He's certainly in the spot now. Yes, he is. Uh, What are you going to do about that notice in the newspaper? Well, I'm going to pay a visit to young Rogers in the death house. Never talk with him. As Dan Garrett or as the Blue Beetle? As the Blue Beetle. But how are you going? I'd like to use some of your invisible paint, Doc, so that I can get to Rogers without anyone knowing it. It'll be dangerous if you're caught. I, uh, I haven't been able to perfect the liquid yet. Well, it'll serve my purpose. I won't be with Rogers very long. Well, be careful, Danny boy. Be I careful. will. Don't worry, Doc. Well, i got to get down to headquarters now. If I can, I'll be back later to change into my Blue Beetle chain armor and mask. I'll be here to help you at any time you want me, Danny. Thanks, Doc. So long. I'm going to read up a little on the Rogers case. Get your feet off that table and stand at attention when your superior officer enters the room. Uh, oh, well, hello, Danny. It's you. I, I was just getting a little shut eye. The night's the time for sleeping. Uh, yeah, I know, but I've been on extra duty lately. And, and you uh, have to catch up when you sleep at headquarters. Yeah, that's it. Uh, and besides, I was waiting for you. I, uh, I want to ask you a few questions, Mike. Well, fire away, me boy. If it's about crime and criminals... Officer Mike Manigan is a regular encyclopedia. Encyclopedia? (laughs) Encyclopedia? Uh, Yeah, that's it. What do you know about Bat Doylson? Oh, him. He was a small-time loan shark before the Rogers boy bumped him off. Do you think Rogers' killing of Doylson was premeditated? No, I don't. Neither do I. This Doylson guy was a bad egg. Where could I find out more about him? Well, maybe Charlie Storm of the Sun could help you out. Oh, that's a good idea. I'll give him a ring. Uh, say, Dan, why are you so interested in this Rogers case? Huh? Oh, I, I, I'm interested in the loan shark racket, and I want to find out all I can about those connected with it. Hello, son. Give me Charlie Storm, please. And well, maybe the commissioner would assign us both to it if we asked him. Uh, later, perhaps, Mike. At present, I, 
Oh, hello, Charlie. This is Dan, Dan Garrett. Say, uh, what do you know about Bat Doyle? Yeah? Yeah, Maroney? Top man, huh? Really? That high? Say, that's very interesting, Charlie. I think I'll get busy and really dig into this loan shark business. <laughs> What did you find out at police headquarters? I uh, phoned Charlie Storm of the Sun. He should be able to give you valuable information. He uh, told me that a man named Maroney was the top man in the loan shark racket. Was Doylson associated with him? No. Doylson's racket was to hang around the gambling halls and racetracks by means of attractive girls in his employ who strike up casual acquaintances with heavy betters, get himself introduced to a loser as a wealthy playboy. Whom one might touch for a loan. I see. But you say he wasn't working with Maroney. No. In fact, he was planning to set up a rival loan business, working among the poorer class of unfortunate people who really need money. But that's a legitimate business. Uh -huh. Not the way these loan sharks run it. Well, how do you mean? Well, let's say a man borrows $100. Yes. He also has to take out life insurance for the same people to assure the loan being paid back in case he dies. These costs and interest on the loan are pyramided so that in some cases the borrower has paid over five and six times the amount of the original loan. And he still owes the principal. Why, why, that's crooked business. Of course it is. And that's the racket the Blue Beetle is going to smash. And where is the Blue Beetle going to light first? In the cell of Stanley Rogers at the state penitentiary. Have you the liquid of invisibility, Danny? Yeah, right here, Doc. I'm going to use it. Go on, Doc. The Blue Beetle is going to fly right into jail. Meanwhile, in the electrocution chamber at the state penitentiary, some officials are testing the lethal equipment. How about the electrode, Sam? Clean as a knife blade, Warden. And the straps? All in order, sir. Have you tried the switches? I was just about to do that, sir. All right. Shoot some juice through and check your dial. Yes, sir. Just a moment. I'll give her 1,800 volts and then jump it to 2,000. All right. What's your dial indicate, Sam? 2,000? That should be strong enough for young Rogers. Yes, too strong, in fact. But the court has ordered his execution, and it is our duty to carry out their order. Want any more? Nope. Shut everything off. That's all for today. I'm going to my office. I'd like to see you there later to check details for the execution in the morning. Yes, sir. Has uh, Father Callahan seen young Rogers today? I think he's with him now, sir. Ask him to see me in my office when he's finished with Rogers. My son, are there any messages you'd like me to give to anyone? Oh, what's the use, Father? Everyone thinks I'm a murderer. Well, what about your sister, Brenda? She still believes in you. What can I say to her that she doesn't already know? Perhaps a little word of farewell? Farewell. Or... Farewell. Yes, I'm going to farewell. I'm going to burn for something I didn't do. There, there, my son. You mustn't let yourself go like that. Try to face things bravely. Secure in the knowledge that there is another life after death. But I'm not ready for death yet, Father. I want my life now. Why can't somebody do something for me? I'm innocent. I'm innocent, I tell you. Everything possible to do has been done, my son. No word from the governor's father. I'm sorry, my son. Perhaps later tonight. Your lawyer has been in touch with his secretary. We are all doing everything we can. Thank you, father. I'm sorry I acted as I did. Please leave me now. I'd like to be... Alone. Very well. Good night, my son. Good night, father. Oh, God, will you come with me, please? I'd like to speak with you a minute. Well, sure thing, father. Right with you. What was that humming? Was that the sound of... That was the sound of the blue beetle's magic ray. The blue beetle? Yes, the blue beetle. But I can't see any. I am invisible. What are you doing here? I've come to help you. Who sent you? 
your sister. My sister? But how did you... Never mind how she got in touch with me. Now listen to what I have to say. Speak softly so the guard won't hear you. This invisibility of mine may not last long. All right. Now, tell me what happened the night you shot Doyleson. I didn't shoot him. But you admitted in court yes, that... I know I did. And at that time, I thought I had shot him. I... I don't understand. The night of the shooting, I'd gone to Doyleson's apartment to ask him for more time in which to pay my application. Oh, hello, Rogers. Come to pay your notes? Well, I'd like to talk it over with you. Come in. Oh, uh, you know Maroney here? Yes, I met him at the Golden Pheasant Club. Hello, oh, Rogers. Hello, Mr. Maroney. Well, I'll leave you two together. You've got private business to talk oh, about. Oh, look, Maroney, why don't you step into the bedroom there and wait till I finish with Rogers? Won't take long, and you and I can finish our business. Okay, but make it snappy. I ain't got all right. Now... What have you got to say, Rogers? Well, I I can't tell you what I owe you now. If you'll wait till I get the principal of my father's estate next year, I'll pay you double. I can't wait that long. When I lend money, i got to get it back to lend to somebody else. That's how I make a living. But I thought... Don't be silly. Now, listen. Every dollar I lend brings me back five or even ten dollars interest. The guys that borrow from me pay me back. Or else. But I can't pay you back now. Well, then tomorrow morning your boss is going to know about this. You can't do that. I'd lose my job at the bank. The disgrace would kill my sister. Say, there's an idea. Your sister's got what it takes. She's a swell-looking gal. I could use her in my business. What do you mean? I could use her at the gambling joint. She could lead the customers on, persuade them to gamble heavily. They lose money, need to borrow... And she introduces him to me. That's what happened to me. Sure, sure. That's the way the old army game works. Why, you dirty, slimy rat. My sister wouldn't wipe her feet on you. Well, maybe after I've told her to jam you're in, she might consider my proposition. That is, if she loves you, maybe she'd be worth more to me. You wouldn't dare approach her with any... I go on, beat it, kid. I got other business tonight. I won't leave this room to your promise. I'll beat it, I say, or I'll build something off your head. Go on. You burnt nothing off my head. This will stop you! Down that gun, Rogers. You can't get away. And, and that's just the way it happened. Then, then you did shoot Doyleson, Rogers. I thought I did at the time, Blue People. In the excitement, I imagined I pulled the trigger. But since then, as I think back, I know I didn't pull the trigger of that gun. Did you take the gun to Doyleson's place with you? No. I saw it lying on the table near where I was standing in Doyleson's apartment. But a bullet was fired from that gun. Moroni testified. Wait a minute. Moroni. Say, that gives me an idea. You think you can save me from... I don't want to die. I didn't shoot Doyleson. I didn't. Take it easy, Roger. Look, call the guard and ask him to get the warden here in a hurry. Tell him you want to make a statement. But what good will that... When the guard unlocks the cell door to let the warden in, I'll slip out. All right. All right, I'll do it. Oh, God! God! I want to see the warden! Oh, run! Oh, run! What has the Blue Beetle in mind? Who is Maroney? And what has he to do with this case? A little later, Dan Garrett is sitting in Dr. Franz's laboratory in the rear of the little apothecary shop. But Danny, what makes you think Moroni shot Doyleson? I don't know. Just a hunch, I guess. But apparently only one shot was fired... According to Maroney's testimony at the trial, it came from the gun that Rogers held. That's Maroney's testimony. He had just as much of a motive as Rogers for wanting Doyleson out of the way. You mean his rival, Lone Racket? Precisely. Doyleson was muscling in on his territory, as I told you. And Maroney was there that night to threaten Doyleson, I'm sure of it. But Rogers admitted on the stand that he pointed the gun at Doyleson, fired it, and Doyleson dropped with a bullet through the heart. But did the bullet that killed Doyleson Come from the gun held by Rogers. 
Well, that I don't know. I'm going to call the ballistics department right now. Check with our expert, Pat Sullivan. Uh, go ahead, Danny. Uh, there's the phone right there. Thanks. And another thing. Rogers must have been an expert marksman to have shot Doylton through the heart. The distance was about 20 feet, wasn't it? According to testimony. Hello? Hello, police department. This is Patrolman Dan Garrett. Say, uh, give me ballistics. Hello, Sullivan. Garrett. Uh, do you remember the Roger Doylton case? Well, tell me something. Uh, was any examination made of the bullet extracted from Doylton's body to establish the fact that it was shot from the murder gun? Hmm. Is that so? Yes, yes, I understand. Uh, say, could you get hold of the gun and the bullet and check them? Oh, thanks a lot. Goodbye. What did he have to say? The bullet was never checked against the gun. Well, that's strange. Yes, it is. But Sullivan's going to check them now, isn't he? Yes, and the Blue Beetle is going to check on Mr. Maroney. Anything special you'd like to take with you? Uh, yes, Doc. What about the midget portable television set you were working on? Well, it isn't ready yet. Oh, well, how about the midget portable sound recording device? Oh, oh that's ready. I'll get it for you. Thanks, Doc. I'll need it tonight. All right. Here. Here you are, Danny. Now, uh, just slip it under your Blue Beetle armor. Okay. And where will the Blue Beetle fly tonight? To call upon Mr. Maroney first, and then upon the governor of the state. everybody away from the governor. You know what'll happen to you if someone gets to him with a plea for a stay of execution? Well, see that you keep on the job. You're the governor's private secretary. Should be easy. Okay. But remember, if Rogers don't burn, it'll be just too bad for you. Goodbye. The Blue Beetle. Yes, the Blue Beetle. Well, what do you want? Masquerader. The murderer of Bats Doylson. Oh, yeah? Well, you got the wrong address. You want the state penitentiary. You shot Doylson, Maroney. Yeah? How are you going to prove it? With the bullet that killed Doylson. And your gun there. Think so? Well, I'll just give you a taste of this gun like I gave Doylson. <laughs> Emptied your gun, Maroney, just as I thought you would. Why, you... Your bullets can't injure the Blue Beetle. Give me that gun. Come and take it, wise guy. That'll be easy. And I'll take your confession just as I recorded it on the device under my blue beetle armor. Back on your heels, murderer. Back on your back. That'll keep you quiet for a while. I'll just tie you up and take this gun. The cops are already on their way over here. There's a hot seat waiting for you, Maroney. Why don't you get some rest? Uh, I think I will. You know, it's strange no one has approached me with a petition for clemency in this Rogers case. Well, Your Excellency, it uh, uh, was a case of deliberate murder. Yes. Well, what's the sound? The Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle. Yes, Your Excellency, and yes to you also, you gangster-controlled private secretary. I'll call the police, Your Excellency. This is an impudent... Stay where you are, Jennings. I want you and the governor to hear something. But I have no time for things like this. I've got to get some rest. Besides, this is highly irregular. Yes, but an innocent man's life is at stake. In 20 minutes, Stanley Rogers may be dead. Unless you sign a stay of execution, Your Excellency. But there's no reason, no new evidence. Here's new evidence, Your Excellency, right here. In this little black box. This portable recording device. Listen. get through to the governor, are you? What? That's right. Keep everybody away from the governor. You know what'll happen to you if someone gets to him with a plea for a stay of execution. What's this? 
I'll see that you keep on the job. You're the governor's private secretary. Oh, Jenny. Be easy. Well, I... I keep I, quiet, I... Jennings, and listen. Okay. But remember, if Rogers don't burn, it'll be just too bad for you. Goodbye. The Blue Beetle. Yes, the Blue Beetle. Now, what do you want? Masquerader. Murderer of Bat Stoylson. Oh, yeah? Well, you've got the wrong address. You want the state penitentiary. You shot Doyleson, Maroney. Yeah? How are you going to prove it? With the bullet that killed Doyleson and your gun there. You think so? Well, I'll just give you a taste of this gun like I gave Doyleson. <laughs> the still waters. Oh, no. 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 I don't want to die. Steady, son. Steady. Oh. All right, Father. I'm all right now. It was just the sight of that. Faster, Pilot. Faster. An innocent man's life is at stake. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Sit here, my son. Adjust the straps. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Faster, driver, faster. An innocent man's life is at stake. I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. Ten seconds. They comfort me. The blue beetle. Blue beetle. Oh. Yes, the blue beetle. With the reprieve from the governor. What sort of a ghastly joke is this? This is no joke, Warden. The blue beetle comes as a messenger of justice. Here, take this paper. You'll find it's a bona fide stay of execution. Signed by the governor of this state. But I don't understand. You're about to electrocute the wrong man, Warden. Hanley Rogers is innocent. The real murderer is on his way here, under police escort. I hope you'll have the guest chamber ready for him. Good night, gentlemen. The Blue Beetle's job is done. of time, the Blue Beetle saved an innocent man from death in the electric chair. Only ten seconds between death and life for a foolish lad who liked to gamble. Later in Dr. Fran's little apothecary shop, Patrolman Dan Garrett is discussing certain features of the case with Dr. Fran. What did Pat Sullivan, the ballistic expert, find when he checked the murder bullet? That the murder bullet was fired from a gun I took from Maroney. But that still doesn't account for the fact that the gun Rogers thought he fired at Doyleson showed that a bullet had been fired from one chamber. Well, I hopped over to Doyleson's apartment before I came here. As a bullet embedded in the woodwork behind the piano, I phoned the inspector and he's sending someone over to investigate and make photographs. Then you Maroney think... fired that bullet into the wall out of the gun Rogers dropped after he ran from the apartment. Mm, I see. Maroney must have shot Doyleson with his gun from the door of the bedroom as Rogers was pointing his gun at Doyleson. That's correct. And in the emotional stress of the moment, Rogers believed he himself actually fired the shot. Yes, Maroney realized that and framed Rogers. Oh, shameful, shameful. And to think that the governor's secretary was involved in this. Well, he was in fear of his life. He didn't dare cross up Maroney. Well, Danny, you've done a fine night's work. Uh, you better get some rest. Yes, Doc. I can use it. Well, so long. I'll see you later. Dan Garrett is going to put the Blue Beetle to bed. (laughs) 
And so the Blue Beetle has done another noble deed, saved a life and brought a murderer to justice. What will his next adventure be in his crusade against crime? That question will be answered in the next episode of The Blue Beetle. Fox feature appearing in Mystery Men Comics Magazine on sale at your newsstand. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen in.